to mark the launch of his Keyshot Studio collection on moment.co.uk, I'm sitting down for a conversation with Alex D'Souza. Many of you will know Alex from the product design and visualization communities on Instagram, where he's been a rising star over the past few years. His most popular projects include his final undergraduate project, View, which absolutely blew up online thanks to a really polished design and beautiful renders. This famous view scene is actually one of the five scenes Alex is releasing through Moment today, made by Alex, mastered in collaboration with me. If you'd like to render your products into Alex's scenes, or if you just want to dissect those scenes to see how they were set up, then head over to moment.co.uk using the link in the description. You will also be actively supporting Alex with every purchase. Now it's time to go behind the profile with Alex D'Souza. I wanted to start things by going right to the start, basically, on where you found design. Do you remember how you found design in the first place? I think with most people, um, or most industrial designers, it was um, a combination of science and art and a lot of creativity. Um, yep. In terms of finding it, again, through school, I think, uh, DT. Yep. Um, and then Classic. for a while, I was looking at architecture, actually, before I sort of because I think industrial design as a as a term, no one mentions it through school and and, and growing up. You know, if you don't know an industrial designer, you don't really hear of them. Um, so yeah, I was looking at architecture and then realised I really like working on products rather than you know massive buildings and things. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, and it's it, it's um yeah going through courses, looking at that, and then starting off and going to Brunel. Um, which was a really good experience. Um, yeah. Yeah. So you did DT at school. Did you do art alongside DT as well? I actually didn't, and it's always okay. been my my um I suppose my weakness, if you will, that that um uh, I always gravitate even through like I'm sure many people have the same experience of sort of teaching themselves CAD or starting to maybe you know go into a bit of rendering maybe in 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 school and and trying those things out. Um, the sketching was something I always did, but it was never my main. I would never do extra sketching. Um, it was always to do it. The, the the rendering and the digital side was always the things I would, you know, go home and do more of. Um, yeah. And that I think is apparent even you know now to the stuff that I like doing now is clearly the digital side of things. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's sort of carried through. So. I get. I mean, from my idea, like um, my point, I did maths and physics alongside mm. DT. I think was my combo. Were you kind of that was my exact to... three as well? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you went, when you went to university, did you go down? I don't know what course you graduated from. Was it a Bachelor of the Arts or Science? Yeah, so I actually from? did product design engineering. Um, okay, so the science. The, the Brunel the has, has the three the three courses: industrial design, product design, and product design engineering. Um, which yeah, like like. Uh, like you were saying has the maths and physics elements um yeah and i think when i was when i started off i was like i don't want to lose the maths and physics and then the maths and physics got a bit too hard <laughs> and i was like okay well and, and i also naturally gravitated towards the more uh the more industrial design side of things um, i had a quite a good placement and got a lot of experience in just purely designing stuff rather than the engineering side of things um and yeah. that led me to when i finally got final year uh really pursuing a more you know what you would classically call a, a more ba style product rather than yeah the engineering bsc style products but um not that any of that Absolutely. really matters you know you can kind of see what you want but yeah if you were to categorize it that would that would be how it would be yeah absolutely yeah because i've probably known you on that tail end of your undergraduate career so probably i knew you more as a ba product designer you know if you were yeah. one of our students at ntu you know I would put you on the BA course and that's typically, you know, you devote a lot more time to visuals um, and the looks of products. Um, but then, you know, if I look back to your, your project view, um, mm -hmm. it makes complete sense that you're on a design engineering course because there's so much attention paid to the internals. Um, but then, yeah, also the nice visual <clears throat> alongside it. Yeah. I think that's, that's, that's something that, that I enjoy doing. And I'm even trying to, you know, make sure I, I carry that on now, which is that, uh, you know, yes, my job title is now an industrial designer. I'm fully right. gone down that, not a product design engineer or anything, but um, I very much do like a technical challenge. Um, and yeah, with Vue, it, it wasn't just a, uh, you know, it wasn't just a, a pretty thing. It was 
it also had some technical backing behind it. Absolutely. Um, you know, not as far as some people took their things and, and things, but I made sure it was injection moldable and, you know, the, yeah. the technology was based on, a, a, you know, it was, it was fathomable and things like that. So, um, yep. yeah, it, it wasn't purely a, a, a looks nice kind of thing. It also technically worked as well. Yeah, I think that's a nice transition. So you're talking about your current role now. So mm. finished Brunel. I know you're now at DCA in Warwick. Yes. Uh, yeah. What got you there? What took you to Warwick? So, yeah, after Brunel, I, I did a, um, uh, a couple of months at Joseph Joseph as an internship. Uh, and that was a really great experience. Uh, and then, yeah, DCA got in contact after seeing View, actually, the, the, the project. Um, it was like, you know, do you want to come up? And it was you know, uh, such a great proposition to kind of work for a company like DCA um, with, uh, you know, the, the, the I think the, the great thing about DCA is the range of products that they work on. Um, and, you know, without going into too much detail, anything from trains to toothbrushes. Um, and Good mix. You know, yeah, exactly. But I think there's, there's benefits to being in a smaller agency and there's benefits to being in a bigger agency. And uh, there's... You know, there's not many times when you get to, not many people get to experience being in a well in a huge agency like DCA. And yeah, yes, there's some of the disadvantages to that, but the massive advantage is that you just got so much backing behind you to do almost whatever you want. You know, you want to build a mock-up of a train, yeah, we can we can do that. Got the resources, you know? yeah, um, yeah, and uh, or and then down to <clears throat> sometimes we are working like a smaller agency on some projects. It is just two or three of you doing the um the project and, and that times it feels like a you know little boutique agency so um yeah it's a it's a good balance but yeah i think the main appeal was just the massive variety of projects that they um that they work on so your role at dca is industrial designer mm. what are you involved with all manner of the design process from research to the end what's your role there yeah absolutely everything there's, there's a great team of industrial designers that, that we have and, and um uh, even researchers, engineers, and we all have a, a mixed team when we work on projects, and it's um, and that's really great. But yeah, you get to work on everything. I think I, I was saying I've been here almost a year now, and uh, the main project I've worked on, which launched back in June, was uh, an airport seating uh, sort of modular cons uh, design, and that was great. Stepping on that sort of in my first month, from the very conception of the idea and then the, and the brief to uh, initial early concepts with loads of sketching, you know, filling yeah. filling up a room with with hundreds of sketches, working really closely with some really talented engineers to make sure that anything we're thinking of is actually doable. Um, and then a couple of months of just <clears throat> solid designing and and CAD and you know lots lots of renders along the way. Actually, KeyShop was really useful. Yeah. Um, and then coming up to June. We were, it's really lucky to be able to be able to have the experience of making a proper mock-up of it. Um, I mean, you wouldn't really call it a mock-up. It's a real thing. Um, yeah. Obviously, it's not a manufacturer-ready sample, but it's um, that was a great experience, you know, getting all that and actually seeing something you designed come to life. In, literally in, yeah. um, in the final materials, then, I suppose. Not necessarily final manufacturing, but it's a it's a complete prototype. Yeah. It's Yeah, obviously, everything was sort of custom-made as a one-off. Yeah. Yeah, but it would it looks as it as it would all the materials are yeah. exactly as they be you know specifying some really nice leathers Incredible. and fabrics and things and then yeah it was a really good um and uh, yeah. yeah we were lucky enough to launch that in Paris back in June yeah that's an amazing achievement I I wanted <clears> to I mean I do obviously want to talk about Key Shop I want to get onto that because mm. we're, we're you know we're marking the launch of your studio collection but I want to focus a little bit more on CAD in general to start off with so. Uh, going back to university, what CAD programs were you taught? Even the 3D modeling and you know, solid work. Yeah, so? I think it's funny. I've seen this topic come up that we're about to discuss come up quite a bit. But I um, started using using a Fusion 360. Okay. Back in 2015, which I think was just its like first or second year of of being a thing. Um, okay. I think it only started about 2013 or something. So it's quite a right immature thing, but it was free. Absolutely. And it worked on and it worked on Mac. So um, you rode rode the Fusion train from there. I've <clears throat> yeah, I used Fusion all through university. I, I uh, yeah. we did do I did teach us SolidWorks, but 
I was lazy and stuck with what I knew. Uh, no, it's fine. You know, it's uh, as you do. And Fusion did the job. Um, you know, it had now coming to DCA, um, you know, we use SolidWorks, so I very quickly picked that up. And it's very similar to Fusion, really. So it doesn't yeah. take long to pick it up, really. Um, and I'm not sure whether it's a combination of my skills growing or also just SolidWorks being better, but I certainly feel that SolidWorks now is enables me to do more advanced surface modeling or assembling and things, but that's certainly not to take away from the fact that Fusion, yeah. I think, is a, a great piece of software, but B, rightfully, is hopefully going to give SolidWorks a bit of a push to modernize a bit. Um, <clears throat> I think it's a bit of an Adobe kind of parallel in that sometimes it's too old for its own good. Um, and yeah, Fusion's come along with a lot of modern features that SolidWorks just desperately needs. But SolidWorks is always is the industry standard for a reason. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So going back to on the other side, visuals, I first wanted yes. to ask before I inevitably forget, you know, DCA found you through your view project. Yes. Is that on Instagram where they found that? Do you know? Uh, I'm not sure. Well, I think it was I think it was from new designers. Um, ah, okay. I think it was predominantly from there, but um, which is an yeah, online new designers for you, right? It was, which is a real shame. Yeah. Um, didn't it get was, it as a yeah. person, um, and uh, and yeah, that was where I got the link with Joseph Joseph as well. Yeah, um, uh, so but, did you yeah. win win the internship through New Designers? The Joseph Joseph one, yeah, yeah. Wow, amazing! Yeah. So you won the which um, award did you win at New Designers? Joseph Joseph. It was really useful, I think. Okay. Yeah. 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 Amazing. Um, <clears throat> yeah, um, and then. Yeah, and then DCA, I think, saw um, saw view from there. But um, yeah. so, how how much do you think the visuals played into, let's call it, the success of that project? Because you know, yeah, uh, I mean, I'm you know, I'm, uh, not you know, not naive about this. Completely aware that that there are probably there are better projects than than view out there. I'm, I'm really pleased with the project, and I think it fully deserves um you know to, to be um recognized in that way but the visuals i'm i'm sure played a lot in its yeah in its reach um reach yeah you know like, yeah i think you know i think working it out on on instagram it's had you know hundreds of thousands you know up to five hundred thousand views going across all the different places it's been and that is equal you know it's surely because of just that that one image with the 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 uh the, the product and the transparent one next to it yeah um there's something i really worked on to make sure that there's an impactful image that just a sort of just makes you go you look at that and go oh what's that and then makes one people want to share it um yeah and you know i think in especially with this with the sort of instagram uh design community you know for better or for worse visuals are so important um and making sure that someone sees if you know, I I know plenty of projects from, um, you know, looking at all the years, all the graduate projects, things that, uh, especially the ones, some of the ones I saw this year, for example, that were absolutely fantastic projects. But the renders were were anything, you know, anything from you know okay to even great, good great renders. But unless they sort of really stand out, sometimes the project doesn't get the recognition it deserves. Um, or the awareness that it deserves. Oh, um, ab absolutely. But well, it's communication at the end of the day, isn't it? That yeah. rendering in a lot of cases, in a lot of projects, is the best form of communication to see what it would look like if it were to be manufactured. Because like we talked about earlier, with university facilities, we haven't always got the facilities to you know, make yeah. plastic parts exactly how they are. Even if we're 3D printing them, can we make it look like the real thing? Then that's, you yeah. know, when you go down upholstery and other routes, universities are probably even less equipped. Yes, because um, um, NTU, you guys do a lot, of, a lot of furniture, more than I think other universities do, don't they? We've got um, a big furniture course, yeah. So Yeah, and I mean, you, you do make a lot, but I suppose yeah. you yeah. render a lot as well. Yeah, we render a lot. Obviously, we encourage students, We everyone would prefer to have a, a finished prototype, right? especially yeah. when you start bringing in shows like new designers and our degree show here uh render's only going to exist in 2d you know we're not jumping inside vr and even that's not as impactful as sitting on the on the finished piece or interacting with the finished piece but
But I, I do think you know, rendering has become de facto, especially on Instagram, yeah. uh, for better and for worse, because well, like I, you I said, think, there's projects yeah, now that get lost in the in seeing, the mash of renders. Seeing what you you've done with with sort of your cohort at, at NTU, the um, I think is a, a little bit of an anomaly in the um, in the education sort of sphere that you know. I had a great experience at Brunel, but Keyshot was never pushed. I mean, most yeah. 90, all, pretty much all of us that use Keyshot self-taught it. Um, I know most people at Loughborough have had the same experience. Um, and <clears throat> it's almost a fact of industrial design life that now you need to you need to be an, you know, an ace at uh, rendering as well. Otherwise, like we've just discussed, no one's going to look at your project twice. Um, I think there's um, so many skills that come into it as well. You know, it's a common yeah. good presentation skills in InDesign. You know, having a good eye for presentation can really help you have a good eye for the visuals as well. It's the people that go out there on Pinterest or Behance and look for existing examples and 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 work backwards. Why does this, just like a page mm. layout, you know, why does this page layout jump to me? Why does this portfolio look great to me? In the same way visuals works back, you go on Pinterest and look at amazing visuals of watches or something like that. And you start to dissect, why does this look amazing? You know, why is the, is it the contrast? Is it the position of the lighting and reverse engineer it to the visuals? Mm -hmm. It's not yeah. necessarily how good you are at picking up the program. But I think that what you've just said about, you know, it's a kind of a given that you've got to be good at the visuals now. It's, it's quite a harsh reality. I know I've seen a load of people go on to have very successful careers being bad at rendering and not getting that. Well, that's the thing. It is a, it is a side that. skill, you know, it's, it's skill. not yeah. the, it's not the, it, it's not core industrial design. And, and right. although, you know, saying that pretty much, you know, everyone, at least, you know, I work at TCA, Keyshot, I mean, I think we output hundreds of renders, most of them internal per, per day. Uh, yeah. So Keyshot is probably the second most used software after SolidWorks. Um, Which is crazy, it's yeah. Not probably quite close. Um, yeah. And so you know, it is a it is a skill that's you know, yet like you said, almost just a given that you need. Yeah. Um, but it is not, you know, being. Uh, I think there is the mistake that something that's rendered excellently isn't always a good design. Um, oh, and you can absolutely. make you can make a a bad design and i've done look it great you can make a bad design look great um i've how and, many render weekly you know, submissions i've put together oh the render is... weekly submissions so you know after work you know you, you know model it up in an hour you know yep. two sketches yeah. on the back of a notepad and uh then it's got a thousand likes or something you know yeah and it's just it's completely false you know because it's not a good design yep. it's just uh it's 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 art really yeah, it is. Um, it's digital art. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I think because I mean a couple of years ago there was a sort of um uh I think Mads was sort of doing that sort of design for Instagram. And right. that thing, you know, in a in a way that's correct, but I think also it the way I view it was it's it's just a bit of fun. You know, at the end of the day, industrial design can can be so serious sometimes. It's all well, how good is this design? What is good design? Yeah. Um and when you're working or you're working with clients or you're working on an actual project. That's what's most important. But right. sometimes you absolutely just want to come home at the end of the day or you've got a bit of free time and you're feeling that creative sort of yeah. urge to go and create something. And yeah. at that point, you're not if if you and there's a whole there's loads of us in this, you know, design community that that enjoy rendering, as there is those that enjoy sketching or model making or something. You don't want to have to do the the work bits. You just want to render something fun or sketch something fun. Yes. Or yeah. make a cool model um yeah, absolutely and the, the vehicle for that is a product it yeah. doesn't necessarily mean that you've done yeah. days of research market research course, it's all manufacturable yeah. you know um so i think it's just making sure that you know everyone who's in this instagram sort of render community knows and knows that that and accepts that just because it's rendered really great does not mean it's a good design at all 100 percent. yeah i yeah. one of my almost mission statements being, you know, going forward with Moment and Percy and my teaching is um, yeah, every minute you spend in rendering software is a minute outside of the process. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, how can we get the best results from 
you know that one day you know if you're doing an eight-week project you might be rendering you want to be rendering for maybe a day get get I everything think with, you need with, out of it with view for example um that was a sort of nine month project yeah. and i think i started the renders with about a week to go <laughs> you know? yeah i was gonna ask um, how long do you yeah. reckon you actually spent on those images i think i i sort of the i don't think i really used uh keyshot with the project until about seven six months in uh just when i had that first inkling of all oh, this is quite a cool form i wanted yeah. to see what it looked like some of very early renders um what was quite interesting is um that very first render was a beige creamy warm scene right and the um the design just seemed to work so well with that warmth that the yeah. lights uh, the background was giving yeah but when i came to do the final renders you know right at the very end i was like well this this works um and yeah. can't be that through um yeah but no i totally totally agree the if you know nine months or so and just one week was spent on on the visuals which i think is a, yeah. a decent balance so let, moving on to our, our collaboration together you're the first collaborator that we're working with at the moment you're the first person i hope of many that we work with um you've produced five scenes for us to sell through moment.co.uk as a collection and as individual how did you approach making your five scenes what process did you go through yeah um i mean i've seen what the things you've done with with moments um and they're they're really great and i wanted to sort of carry on that with the way i approached it was thinking how can i make these scenes uh, be as applicable to as many people doing their projects you know especially thinking with people doing their major projects um yeah. and how, how they want to visualize those uh the way i thought about it was can i give a stylized aesthetic that definitely gives off a, a mood and an atmosphere but that remains customizable or applicable to a wide range of of products right. um and i think hopefully with the the five things we've got we we sort of achieve that in providing a an aesthetic that someone can just take in and and, and get that but it yeah you know can be adjusted and changed to uh, to what they want so I've had the benefit now of working on all the scenes with you and, and collaborating, I suppose, on some of the mastering of them. Mm. There are uh, existing scenes. So, for example, we've already said the view scene is launching on there, which didn't need too much work. We already know it's done a good job. Um, but there are some new ideas that you bring in to this. I guess yeah. things that you wanted to explore maybe before I pr approach about the collaboration. The one that really jumped out to me was the Technicolor Studio which was kind of a joy for me to work on on the other side because it, it's so fun to play around with. So, yeah, do, yeah. I mean, do you want to give a brief description of how the Technicolor Studio works? Yeah, so, I mean, going along that line of of making a scene that provides a an instant aesthetic, an instant mood, um, but is still customizable by the, you know, the, the person that's using it. I was thinking, what's the simplest possible way that you can if you can generate uh, an entire atmosphere in a scene yeah. without requiring 20 different lights or a massive HDRI or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and also, how can we make it really quick to just change that aesthetic? Um, yeah. So the way Technicolor Dream Studio works is we've we've configured it so that you can completely change the lighting and atmosphere of the scene by just changing one JPEG image. Yeah. You know, you don't have to go hunting for HDRIs. You just go, just Google any image you want uh, yeah. and yeah. plop it in. And immediately the colors and the lighting and the brightness and, and the, the sort of ambience from that image is what provides the studio with its with its uh, atmosphere and lighting yeah. uh you know so if you i think one of the ones we've done is a sort of a purpley yellowy sort of quite almost flowery kind of scene and yeah. i think it's kind of exactly what the image is but it's you know just something i grabbed from unsplash you know and it it just provides it's got some yeah. yellows some purples in it and uh the way that the light passes through that image just uh gives the whole scene and fills it with those colors but what's great is if the image has 
yellow on the left hand side and pink on the on the you know on the right the that comes through into the scene and yeah. instead of just being a mishmash of all the colors into one you get distinct areas of of color and you know you could even play with making your own image so if you did know exactly what you want you could you know open up the illustrator or the or the ipad and, and sort of sketch out some different blobs of color and then upload that and it would be the easiest way of getting color exactly where you want rather than having a light here a light here a light there um and yeah so hopefully it does appeal to people that want to really quickly generate a, a massively atmospheric scene but don't want to have to set up all the different complex lights and things have you got more ideas planned? Have you got always a stash of ideas that you want to play around with in visuals? Or maybe something you want to design? Do you always have like a, a tally? Yeah, there's. A, I mean, th I think because, you know, I, I use Keyshot so much um, at my job and also outside that you're always thinking of new ways you could do something or, or that's an interesting idea or, or, or that's a new feature you could use. Um, and I think the idea, for this one especially it was just the idea of can we almost create an almost projector um and how can we or gl gl same glass window was the other idea that came through is can we use something like that um and yeah that's where the inspiration for this scene was just you know thinking about the way keyshot works and how can we do something new with that really yeah i wanted to round things up with a classic designer question who are your biggest design inspirations? What profiles do you follow? Who do you look for for inspiration? Yeah. I mean, I think as with most people, when they go through industrial design education, um, a lot of us naturally gravitate towards Dieter Rams, um, yeah. which is your stock answer. But it heavily influenced me, especially during sort of my final year and, and sort of starting to do my own designs and, and posting those. Um, but interestingly, working on the wide range of products that we see at, at DCA, it sort of opened uh, eyes into different inspirations that you might, you know, that contrast quite heavily with with um, mm. the DCAM sort of aesthetic. In terms of the visuals, um, I think for for me that there's. I, 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 you know, I think I've got a sort of a style that I like to put out, which is that sort of warm uh yeah. atmospheric uh visual but equally what i'm trying to sort of push towards for a bit more is the not apple aesthetic because i think apple's visuals are too sometimes too cartoonish in a way they're so perfect that they become almost cartoon but the visual where it's it's clean and organic but there's still a sense of reality to it um and I think that the one that I, I point out, and any friends have probably made them watch this about a million times, was when Apple launched the uh, Series 6 watch, I think. Okay. And it was the first time that Apple really used uh, detail and uh, distortion and imperfections in their render. And it just oh, stood right. out so much as a render that really looked real rather than just their you know, bog standard. Perfect I think you render. can argue, yeah, it's a similar story with a lot of the big guns. If I think to uh, Google visuals that I see, mm. um, you know, they're also incredibly clean. They don't look real. Like you said, yes. that, that cartoon visual that they've yeah. gone through, which is crazy because as a young, des young designer, young 3D artist, when you come in through the ranks, you know, leveling up on Keyshot in particular, you're always looking to bake those imperfections in. It's something I preach a lot. If you want, yeah, everyone everyone goes to the stage where they add a thumbprint to something, you know, or been there, or done that. Everyone's done times. that. Yeah, yeah. Which in a in photography, the photographer would laugh you out of the room. Like, why? Why? why yes. do, we we've got cloth here to to buff this out. We've got a beautiful piano black product. Why are we putting a thumbprint on it? But visuals, we're always trying to bake it back in. And it's funny, you know, like you said, when you look at the big guns. The people that are known for having, you know, pretty much the best visuals. Are you going to say that Apple or Google don't have the best visuals? I mean, mm -hmm. they're certainly selling a lot of product. I they're think there's a there's, like there's a stage. I think you know th th those of us who are sort of really keen on the, the visualization of some things. You, there's 
quite but I think there is a stage that everyone goes through which is that when you're starting out you're trying to make something look as photo real as possible because that's yeah you know that's the that's the amazing thing with rendering is you can make something look real um yeah. and so at that point when you're starting out you you might add a thumbprint or you might add scratches and things and, and that's that's all sort of getting you to that point where something you get someone goes is that a photo and then you go oh, i've made it you know that, oh there's yeah. that a photo amazing yeah. you know and um, and then once you sort of get past that and then you sort of start going into more art direction and right. i think when you then get into that stage you're not just looking at you know for example no you're not not, not just looking at rental weekly um <clears throat> you're looking at uh magazines and Right. design blocks and things and people where and places where it's photographs that they're using um because at that point you you're at a stage where you know you can reasonably match a photo real uh, uh shot yeah without needing to add scratches and things to it of course what your actual focus is then is the direction of the shot um and what lighting are we doing what's yeah. the composition um yeah. So yeah, I, I, I suppose you know a, a lot of a couple of years ago it was looking at all the you know even guys like you and everyone else in the community that was doing these amazing renders and I think um, you know I've seen this in in your work as well it's 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 now less the focus is less on photorealism it's now just actually is this a good image or not yep um, and I can't tell I you the last that, time I put a thing fingerprint on something. Yeah, <laughs> I can't tell you really the last time I put a scratch on something, which no, is weird I mean, because I, so many of my YouTube videos will incorporate that. I, I started doing preach. the same thing. I was, I was, you know, you're doing some renders and you realize you sometimes you've just got a plastic material with no texture on it or anything. And if it's doing the job, why Quite spend often. half an hour adding maps to this thing and, and everything when actually yep. the lighting and the composition is going to do all the photo realistic work for you? Yep. Um, I had a really good chat with um, some of the guys that work from the photography team. And yep. we were discussing the sort of how similar Keyshot or 3ds Max can be to this photo studio we've got in the office. Right. And uh, I was almost, I think, I think a couple of people, you know, a couple of other people have discussed, discussed this. I think Sam says this a lot, which is that I think, the greatest thing you can do to learn rendering is practice photography um and yep. even if you just try out some product photography uh yeah understanding what a three-point light system is oh yeah understanding how diffusion reacts with the shadows and things yeah you know when you're just looking at it as sliders on a software it doesn't it's all abstract yep. when you actually understand all right well this is the size of the umbrella or something or, or of course. how strong the light is or where the light is or what's the fill you know if you apply those into your key shot scene, it's just going to be more realistic than of course. having a HDRI point anywhere that just looks good, you know. Um, and yeah, I think that's the biggest change in inspiration for me over the last couple of years has been less making, working with the render rather than just forgetting it's a render. This is just a digital photo shoot, you know. Yeah, absolutely. I've used the same thing. I've said to students, go go and look at photography tutorials online yeah. because everything a photographer does, we can do on in the digital side of things. If you're going for realism, that's how yeah. you do it, not by putting a fingerprint on a on a button. Which but is anyone does there, need to it? go through that phase of yeah, yeah. oh yeah, go get it out your system. You need to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get it, get it out your system. But we're not those artists, you know. We're not, we're not producing Hollywood films where hmm. you put an asset in a scene, it's got to come off as realistic, like it's being used. We are artists at yeah. the end of the day. I think the other thing that, just on, to touch on that point, which is quite interesting, is the other thing that sort of more VFX artists have is that they, um, you know, when you see those sort of the, uh, you know, when they sort of show the different layers in a, you know, yeah. in, a, in a, a Hollywood film or something, the actual yeah. renders aren't that great. Sometimes they're, they're, yeah flat or they're you know it's not even low quality but it's the fact that because it's a maybe it's an action scene or something there's an explosion and and you got the color grade and everything you can hide a lot of it with the film um yeah whereas when you're producing a you know a, a shot of something on a white background there's nothing to hide there 
Um, out in the open. You can't, you can't really have an explosion point. to hide your chair, you know. Um, which, which <laughs> why, not? <laughs> yeah, I was say, why not? Yeah, why not? Yeah. Then that'd be the next studio collection. Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, people don't, I almost think people don't believe me when I say how much our renders come to life in Lightroom when we edit them. Oh, yeah. They yeah. just go yeah. from, you know, if you're looking to level up your key shot, the answer is probably get out a key shot and go yes. and start, yeah. start going into Adobe. We've done scenes where we've added atmospheric smoke and beams of light, you know, coming volumetrics. If you want light, this is another thing, phase you go through, of, you know, light trying to come through a window and getting that, you know, beam of the, the ray of sun. I do it all in Photoshop now. I don't even do it in Keyshot. I've, and people might say yeah, that's just, cheating, but. I think there was a, I was, I was doing a scene the other week of, um, it, it was for this this airport um, uh, seating project, which was a full airport interior. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and I probably spent as much time in Photoshop with that image as I did in Keyshot. Yeah, uh, just editing different tones, different colors, making overexposing the window. You know, you you almost use the key shot scene as a just a a foundation for the actual Base. image. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. I guess my last question is: we've talked about tips for the visuals. You know, we've just both said that go and study photography and, and things to look at. What are your tips for aspiring? industrial designers perhaps undergraduate students maybe people that are still mm. in college before yeah well you know i'm very much still learning myself i've got an awful long yep. way to go but for undergraduates perhaps i think the biggest thing that changed um that i think helped my sort of progression through the university was doing projects that just outside of of the university ones i said yeah um i think you know, engaging as, 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 as many, as much as the, like we, like we discussed earlier, as much as the sort of render community has some of its drawbacks, it's also a massive opportunity to, A, do those challenges and, and just, you know, spend a couple of days. At a university, you have so much time to just, you know, spend a couple of hours on a project. And, yeah. uh, you know, it, it's um, it helps so much in terms of just getting your experience of actually just getting something finished because yeah. I, I suppose uh, uh, you know if you count back at the number of projects that are set say in final year which is i think when you're actually sort of really doing proper design work maybe it's two or three maybe four projects that you do um yeah. and some of those you obviously got your big one but some of those are side, little side projects that are done really to get the grades you know i think sometimes to really ex get that creativity going those little side projects that you can do you know maybe it's a render weekly challenge or maybe it's yeah. a brief you know elsewhere um they they're great for just getting your experience out at, at starting working on and finishing a project that yep. you then release you know um, of course and, and get comfortable not only putting that, ideas out there right no exactly but not only that when it comes to portfolio time um if you have done a proper design process even if it's just a couple of days done sketches done CAD modeling, maybe a bit of research, and then you've done some visuals. That's a portfolio project that you can talk about yep. in an interview. Um, and I think as well, people love seeing projects that aren't the same ones that they've seen a million times. You know, everyone's yep. seen a redesigned toaster or a redesigned kettle, you know, there's the same uni projects. And if you can show something that it doesn't have to be amazing, it doesn't have to be, you know, revolutionary, just something you've done on your own volition that shows that you are really actually interested and in, invested in this uh, of course yeah really great. i couldn't agree more with that i think a lot of as a, as a student i would have also made the same argument that my students make now in that i haven't got time for those extra projects whereas now in how much i work as a professional now i haven't got time for those projects now yeah, i really don't yeah. but looking back i definitely did at university I think, yeah, I, I, I was expecting to um you know, after after university, you finish at five 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 thirty. What's this? You know, you you got so much time, but you never do. I'm now um, working till like one in the morning, just glued on my laptop like this. But, um, I don't have time for it. Yeah, I I think I posted about twice on my Instagram in the last year or something. It's um yeah, it's really gone down here. But um, you know, I think yeah, it, it's right. I think it, and and I think also there's the acceptance that sometimes what is your goal? You know, if your goal is to get a job at an agency or something 
look at the kind of projects that they're doing and do a similar project um yeah. you know or if you want to start your own business after university selling your own product then just keep doing projects that you think might have commercial potential or something um i think that was i always after graduating i always wanted to work as an agency and yeah. particularly one that maybe has a you know shift towards consumer products and uh that was something i based my decision on what to do for my major project was well that's the project i want to do here's a yeah. project they might be interested in um yeah and uh yeah i think with major projects is the um your decision on what to do is so important um as a, where you want to end up and uh yeah as long as that's sort of the same path then hopefully that will work out of course well, I think I'm happy to leave things there. Um, I've it's been really good talking to you, Alex, and it expanding yeah, on that. Absolutely. I mean, there's there's bits I've learned about you and your definitely like earlier career and how you got into it. It's interesting to know we've come from a similar background and interest yeah. that's all that's got got us into it. So we're launching the collection today. Um, we're both going to be putting stuff out there on our on our Instagrams. Um, I can finally be... post something. That'll be good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, I'm glad that we've given you that kind of uh i want to say platform but not not platform i'm glad, glad we've given you that job where you can well it's almost like you've, you've, time. you've set me another side project you know you've got me yeah yeah got me working on something else again which uh, um i think it's always good to have that bit of push to of to work on something creative again yeah. and um it's uh yeah it's been a really great process working with yourselves and and the rest of the moment uh team and you know trying to match your your quality um because uh yeah i'm trying out some of your scenes and i mean there's still some that i just don't understand how you've got the lighting to be like that you know <laughs> you know from my point i mean there's still times when i walk past someone's desk well not anymore we're remote or when we had the office when i'd walk past someone's yeah. desk and have to even question myself like how we did that and i don't think there is an answer to it I don't think there's an answer I can give you. Even it's that awkward, it's that awkward moment when you've, when you've done a scene and then you forget how you did it. And, yeah, uh, that worries <laughs> me sometimes. Yeah, if, if we make a mistake and we lose something, we w actually won't be able to get to that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll be able to get another, maybe another good result, but we won't hit on that one. Um, but yeah, no, I, I really appreciate your feedback. Obviously, we're, we're on a mission to make product visualization quicker and more effective for product designers like yourself you know you're still a recent graduate so um you know that's really good feedback look forward to getting them out there look forward to carrying on playing these scenes i think they're going to be yeah a huge boon to some um to some up and coming um artists and designers so had a great yeah, time collaborating with you useful. alex yeah we'll no, leave it there brilliant. great talking yeah thanks liam bye, bye. yeah alex bye